All right, so without further ado, we are gonna get started on unit one, the American dream. This first unit is gonna take us all the way through the first quarter. I know it sounds like a lot, but there's a lot of depth to it and it is very interesting. It's probably one of my favorite units to teach, all right? So here we go. We have our learning targets and success criteria on the left over there. And more importantly, what you guys are going to be interested in is our agenda, okay? So CER slides, that stands for Claim Evidence Reasoning. I'm going to take us through those today. And we're going to follow it up with doing our first writing prompt of the year. It's going to be on your favorite movie slash TV show. So should be generally pretty accessible, all right? So let's move in then. Claim Evidence Reasoning. If you guys have heard CER before in our English department, somewhere else, it's it's what we pretty much use universally in our building. It is something you guys really need to learn if you're going to be a successful writer. Whether it's writing, responding to a small writing prompt or writing a collegiate level essay. Everything is going to come down in formal writing to claim evidence and reasoning. So, I tried to spell out what a claim is in layman's terms. So, claim. Your statement in response to a prompt, question, etc. This comes at the beginning of a response so the audience knows your position. This is almost always going to come at the very beginning. Here's some example questions and claims. All right, I highlighted the claims in blue. What is your favorite color? Pretty basic question, right? My favorite color is green. It's been my favorite color ever since I was a child. I've always felt an attachment to the color. So we could look at this. This is a good claim. Uh, the first sentence on its own, my favorite color is green, is technically a claim, but anytime you can add in some extra details to already start backing up your claim, it's a good thing to do. So that's why I included those in there. Adds a little depth to your claim. Here's another example. Do you think Darth Vader's helmet is a little much? Totally opinionated, right? I'm gonna respond, I believe Darth Vader's helmet fits his head perfectly. Simple sentence, it works as a claim. Um, that one's without a ton of detail, but it works just the same. All right, so here's another example. This one is, what is your favorite Goosebump book? Is the question. I low-key love Goosebumps, by the way. R.L. Stein is amazing. Some of his young adult books are incredible. His imagination is just fantastic. What? It's a great action shot. Yeah, but I took the picture before you filmed. No, well, maybe you only thought you did. Anyways, side tangent over. What is your favorite Goosebumps book? My favorite Goosebumps book is Ghost Beach because it has interesting characters and an amazing double twist ending. So there again, I'm stating my claim, but I'm also adding in a little bit of evidence and reasoning there just into my claim itself. Um, but just, just adding more, more detail as to why I hold that claim. Evidence, all right? Evidence is... We're gonna use evidence to back up your claim. You want to be quite specific with evidence. Supporting your claim is important or no one is gonna take your claim seriously, all right? This this goes for anything a writing, like a small writing prompt like this, you talking to your friends out in the parking lot, or, and that goes for anything. If you're talking about something silly to something really serious, like, you know, politics and social issues, no one's really gonna take you seriously if you don't have evidence to back up your claims. All right, so we're gonna go right off the examples we've already been using, okay? What is your favorite color? I'll go through the claim again. My favorite color is green. It's been my favorite color ever since I was a child. I've always felt an attachment to the color. There's the claim, now we're gonna move right into evidence. For instance, I always liked the Green Power Ranger. I picked my favorite NFL team, the Miami Dolphins, because I liked the green in their uniforms. I also preferred green M&Ms to the other colors. So I'm citing some evidence as to why, over the course of my life, green has been established as my favorite color. Specific examples, all right? Let's go on to the next one. Do you think Darth Vader's helmet is a little much? Here's our claim, right? I believe Darth Vader's helmet fits his head perfectly. Now we move into evidence. This becomes clear at the end of Star Wars Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, when he removes his helmet and reveals his egg-shaped head. So I'm citing a specific moment in the film that backs up my claim that uh, his helmet is an appropriate size and look for his egg-shaped head, okay? So putting in the evidence there. Wow, look at this screen. You're like, Mr. Deeds, that is way too much evidence. No, this is like 
really what you want generally you want just as many details in your evidence as possible you want them to be relevant but the, the more evidence you have the better the more people are going to be able to agree with what you're trying to state even if it's opinionated like this right so what is your favorite goosebumps book here's our, our claim my favorite goosebumps book is ghost beach because it has interesting characters and amazing double twist move into evidence the two main characters, Jerry and Terry Sadler, are spending the last few months of summer with some of their relatives in New England. While there, they meet a trio of siblings that have their last name, which is definitely a little strange. As Jerry and Terry explore the beach area, they find some creepy things, and every time they do, the trio of siblings shows up. It seems too coincidental, so it keeps the reader on their toes wondering what's up with the kids. When it all comes together at the end, a big twist is revealed about the siblings, but right when it seems the book has come to a complete close, we learn one crazy, insane, and shocking detail that makes the entire book super memorable. Alright, so that evidence is backing up my claim. I'm going into details kind of what the book is about and why you need to know this evidence and how it comes into the claim, okay? So, you always have to assume as a writer that your reader or audience knows little to nothing about what you're talking about. So if I were to say my favorite Goosebumps book is Ghost Beach, and none of you guys have heard of it, read it, seen the little episode that's based on it, you're going to be like, oh, great, I don't have any sort of imagery in my head to know why it's your favorite book. So that's why for this specific example, right, I'm laying out a lot of details. I'm trying to put a picture in your mind about what's going on in this Goosebumps book so you can kind of get a vibe of why it's my favorite. I'm also not only setting up imagery in it, but I'm, I'm using specific evidence that ties back into my claim about why I like it, hence the mentions of the interesting characters and the twists and stuff like that, all right? So... You're going to use a lot of evidence and reasoning. Your, your claim is generally going to be the shortest thing that you write about. Evidence and reasoning is going to take up the bulk amount of when you're writing. Reasoning, the, the final one, okay? Typically, people struggle with this the most, so I've tried to keep this a little simple to help you guys early on, and as we go on in the year, you can learn how to expand on your reasoning. But here's reasoning in a nutshell. This is your explanation of why the evidence matters. If you struggle with reasoning, think back to the claim. What are you trying to prove and how does your evidence relate to that? All right, so what are you trying to prove? How does your evidence relate to the claim? So here we go. What is your favorite color? I've gone through that, right? And here's my reasoning. As is shown with these examples, so I'm touching on the examples I just mentioned, my love for the color green dates all the way back to my childhood and has stuck with me ever since. All right, so it's kind of wrapping up. It's almost like a, a mini conclusion of your claim. And now let's look at our reasoning for, do you think Darth Vader's helmet is a little much? The shape of Vader's head could clearly only fit in a custom helmet such as the one he wears. So I used my evidence and now the reasoning is just explaining why that evidence matters, how it ties in to the claim. Again, we have our long goosebumps claim and evidence, right? And then we move into the reasoning of it. As is evident by the intriguing characters and the crazy twists at the end, this Goosebumps book stands alone in the series as my favorite. So I'm kind of restating the claim here. Very similar to if you guys have ever heard of doing this in a conclusion of like an entire essay or something, you're going to do this all the time during the year, whether it's with a writing prompt or a singular paragraph in an essay. Claim evidence and reasoning can kind of be viewed as a micro version of an intro with body paragraphs and a conclusion for say a huge essay except it should be used in every single paragraph so really instead of looking at it as a as a whole essay for instance just think about each paragraph you you write typically having a claim followed by evidence wrapped up by reasoning we're gonna watch a clip from ace ventura here uh ace ventura pet detective if you guys haven't seen ace ventura it's so funny it's a cult classic it's when jim carrey was at his absolute peak okay this scene completely shows an example of claim evidence reasoning and why it's important okay so roger Pedactor didn't commit suicide he was murdered Okay, so there's there's this claim, right? Roger Pedactor didn't commit suicide, he was murdered. There's the claim. 
Well, that's a very entertaining story. But unfortunately, real detectives have to worry about that little thing called evidence. So at this point, the female detective straight up ass we have to worry about something called evidence she is effectively speaking for the audience of the film here she's speaking for the viewer of the film we want to know okay this is a great claim but where's your evidence that's how i'm gonna be all year where's your evidence Uh oh i think i heard a toilet flush <laughs> maybe somebody lost the turtle <laughs> well i guess i'm a little out of my league here Einhorn, good work. <laughs> oh, there is just one more thing, Lieutenant. This woman is Roger Padactor's neighbor. She lives across the hall. She said she heard a scream. Is that right, ma'am? Right. And you said you had to open the balcony door when you keyed into the room? Yeah, that's true. You're certain you had to open this door? Yeah, I'm certain. What's the point, Ventura? And then Ace goes ahead and he pretty much gives all of his evidence right there, okay? And she even says, what's the point? So, again, she's speaking for the audience. She's speaking, she's speaking for the viewer. So when she says, what's the point? That means it's time for him to pull in his reasoning. So he's going to tie it all together, his explanation of his claim and his evidence together. Only this... This is double pane soundproof glass. There's no way that neighbor could have heard Pedactor scream on the way down with that door shut. The scream she heard came from inside this apartment before he was thrown over the balcony and the murderer closed the door before he left. Yes! Yes! Oh, yeah! Can you feel that, buddy? Huh? 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 I have exercised the demons. This house is clear. Losers? Get him out of here! Losers! Let's go, Ace! Losers! Let me be heard! And there you have it. He gives his claim evidence and ultimately his reasoning makes everyone else look really silly again if you haven't seen that movie go watch it it's awesome um yeah this is a this is a perfect example of claim evidence and reasoning in a film if you ever are like really struggling come watch this clip it'll it'll help you through claim evidence and reasoning pretty easily all right we're gonna move on we're done with claim evidence and reasoning not really. It will always be here with us, but we're gonna move into writing prompts. So every Monday, we're gonna spend five to ten minutes responding to writing prompts on Google Classroom. All right, these are almost always gonna be worth seven points. And think about that every week at the end of a, if we're doing it every week at the end of every month, that's about 30 points. That's actually gonna amount to a huge part of your grade by the end of the year. So make sure you're doing your best on these. These are really important, even though they seem uh small and quick and easy these are super important this is where we're gonna this is where we're gonna grow your writing skills and make sure you're understanding how to use claim evidence and reasoning in anything whether it's a goofy writing prompt or a creative one or a really serious one you should always be using claim evidence and reasoning uh if you haven't already go ahead and log into google classroom you're gonna find the writing prompt favorite movie slash tv show and you're gonna respond to it, okay? I did an example here with my favorite um, show, Lost, but here's simple questions. What is one of your favorite movies or TV shows of all time? Why? That's it, just those two questions. Now, honestly, I could probably write like 30 pages on those two questions, no joke, on this one show, one, one response, right? And that's what'll happen to you if you go to college and you're writing an essay. They might ask you, they might give you a prompt that's about that small, and they're gonna be expecting about anywhere from you know five to ten pages of writing because you should be able to think more complicated about that about a simple question but for the sake of our class here's my writing prompt writing prompt example answer lost is one of my favorite tv shows of all time it has one of the most interesting and original plot lines not to mention amazing in-depth characters and insane twists there's my claim okay very simple 
And the show is about a group of people that get in a plane crash. A lot of people die, but a handful of people survive and try to stay alive on the island as they wait to be rescued. Lost gets interesting real fast as there are unexplainable and deadly mysteries about the island that our characters run into. There are six seasons, and each one of them is a roller coaster ride of emotion, highs and lows, and an insane amount of goosebumps. There's all my evidence, okay? So I'm just telling, telling you guys and the audience all these great things about Lost and what it is and kind of what makes it interesting. And I'm just going to wrap it up with reasoning. These are just some of the reasons that Lost is one of my favorite TV shows. So plain and simple, just pointing out that, hey, these reasons that I just mentioned, um, this evidence that I just mentioned is why it's one of my favorite shows uh for those of you who haven't seen it lost is it's on netflix currently it's widely considered one of the best shows of all time you're not going to see it you know trending on netflix one because netflix didn't make it so they're not going to be pushing it and two it came out in like the early 2000s just because it came out in the early 2000s doesn't make it any less good it is incredible if you haven't seen it go check it out uh a little fun fact here you should always italicize the names of movies and tv shows like lost when you write about them all right so notice how it's italicized here it's italicized here when you're doing your writing prompts, I don't care so much about that, but as we go on in the year, there will be assignments I want you guys to italicize things. Some of my other favorite TV shows I just listed, Adventure Time, Seinfeld, Scream Queens, alright. This would be a 7 out of 7 response. You get full credit for that, hands down. So if you're ever wondering what does a full credit assignment look like, that's what it looks like, alright. Now, we're going to look at some examples that maybe don't get full credit. I call these partial credit responses, all right? These are going to have typos, incomplete thoughts. They're going to be lacking parts of claim, evidence, and reasoning. So, here's a baddish one. My favorite movie of all time is Step Brothers. That's a fine claim. Simple, it'll work. The movie is about two middle-aged dudes that hang and become friends. All right, so that starts getting a little slainy we don't really want slain in our responses so i'd say something like the movie is about two middle-aged men that act like children something like that right will ferrell's in the movie and has curly hair all right that's kind of evidence but it's not relevant it's never going to be tied in as relevant so it really shouldn't be there they make a rap video at one point again that doesn't tell us much. We need it to be elaborated a lot more. So you can say they made a rap video at one point and then you could talk about the rap video and what makes it interesting and funny and ties into it being your favorite movie. And then it ends pretty abruptly. I like it a lot because it's funny. All right, that's not like the worst reasoning in the world, but it doesn't tie into any of the evidence, okay? So I would probably give that like a four or five out of seven. All right, let's look at a worse one. I like the Avengers. Okay, it's a claim. It's really simple, but okay. Iron Man is best. Grammatical error. Kind of. Part 2 is better than part 1. I don't even know what that means. It's a good show. Mm, not a show. It would be actually considered a film or a movie. Make sure you always know that distinction, that there's a difference between a show and a series versus a film and a movie. Uh, you should watch it. Okay, that reasoning kind of shows, yes, you like it, so you're recommending it, but it doesn't tie in any of your evidence. So I'd give that one like a two out of seven, three out of seven, two, probably a two out of seven. And this is the worst. I like Teen Titans Go, it is Foony, Robin is hilarious, and it's a cartoon show. So there we have typos, it's ridiculously short, there's not many details. Uh, even though there is a claim in there, which is great, uh, it's followed up by um, evidence that hasn't been edited clearly and it doesn't go into details and there's clearly no end sentence that explains it through reasoning all right so that one i would probably just put a missing in there if you guys ever have something that short i'm just gonna put missing and you guys can make it up on your own time so yeah that's pretty much all we have for today this is this is your big thing do your writing prompt if you have questions about it, if you want me to look it over and be like, hey, Mr. Dietz, is this good? Let me know. I can I can totally take a look on it. And if you guys ever turn something in and you have a question and you're like, is this good enough? I can look it over and you can go back and complete it. I'll let you complete it for full credit, all right? If you have questions, you can email me. You can message me on Microsoft Teams. We can set up a one-on-one -on -one call. You can go back in the video and uh, re-watch, pause, just to help clear your mind of things but yeah that is 
pretty much all we have for the day. So went over the CER slides and you're learning how to do a writing prompt correctly for the rest of the year. We do a lot of these, so make sure you do them well, okay? Hopefully this flip classroom thing goes well is my like first time making a video on it so we'll see how it goes but let me know what you guys think if i can make things better or worse anything like that all right so hope you guys are doing good and uh we will talk to you like right after you are done with this okay bye